we're going to be looking over to, uh, Psalms 120. We're going to, we started over there last week, just a couple of verses. And uh, we'll be picking up there about three or four, wherever we left off. But we do want to pray and ask God to touch hearts and minds and homes and families today. Because we certainly need it, and there's many others that need prayer. Ukraine and Afghanistan there's still an awful things happening over there and it looks like really no end to it. It looks like nobody wants to get in and help them. Uh, so let's pray for them and, and when you see them and you hear some of them here begging for help and see what uh, uh, Russia is doing to them. And, uh, say that's the way Hitler done the Jews. They went after them and nobody wanted to help them. It all came down. We just want to pray and ask God to help us and, and give us a burden for these things around us. Father, we thank you for this morning for loving us and for keeping us going all the way to the house of God and much further. We just thank you for loving us and we ask God, God right now to take away all the doubt, fear, anxiety of these days and cast them aside. I leave you. And Jesus might work that Precourse in our lives, that we might praise you and love you today. We would not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We look to you. And Father, we pray for these on our prayer list. We pray for these in the back there, uh, the, the children and, and the teachers and all. We pray, God, that you have your way in their hearts and lives. And we pray, God, today for our nation, uh, Lord, that we live in this country, our uh, uh, leadership. Lord, we Pray for thee, God, that you, uh, Lord, help them to turn to thee or move them out of the way that we might see the Lord Christ in these days and times. Lord, we just want to thank you and pray to be with these that's here today and bless their homes and bless their hearts and their families. And, and Lord, we just praise you. We just come to praise you. May we feel your presence today. May you breathe on us right in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise you. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house in Sunday school. Yes. And this, uh, we talked about last Sunday a little bit about these next 14 chapters we're looking at. Uh, is a hymn book that when they went to Jerusalem, they would sing when the feast of, of, of the uh, Passover and the feast of the Pentecost and the feast of the Tabernacles that was there annually, they would take that and sing these hymns. So the next 14 chapters we're looking at be in the form of a hymn, but you'll, we'll see them transition as they go through. But in this 120, we'll, we'll pick up about uh, probably verse 3 sometime. We, we, we read through them last week, and then we got on to Jonah and, and read and studied on, on that psalm. And so we'll move on. We've got some other things we want to read and look at over in uh, Jeremiah and maybe... Samuel. But in verse 3 he says this, What shall be given unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee? Thou folks tongue. And then he says, Sharp arrows of the mighty coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Mesa, that I dwell in the tent of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hated me. I am for peace, but when I speak they are for for war. So this psalmist is in a situation here now that, praise God, he's living among people that's uh, uh, bad neighbors, so to speak. I mean, he's living there and he's, uh, and we do that same thing, you know. Even now we live among these things that are heathens and pagans and sinners, uh, whatever you want to call them, but they're away from God. They're worshiping whatever they want besides God. And so, we live amongst those two, and we've seen it more so even today. We've seen it sometimes back. But I pray that this uh, put us to our knees in prayer, all these things that's happened. But in the verse 3 here, you, he says, the psalmist says, uh, You who plan evil, or what will God do to you? How is it that he's going to punish those? And he will, says, he will reckon. He will reckon with his enemies, praise God, the sinner himself. They are doomed by God. Punishment will be harsh for these right here that he's talking about. And he's talking about what will happen to them. 
In verse 4 there, he says this, that he'll punish you. He says sharp arrows. He says he will punish you with the sharp arrows of a warrior, praise God, and with burning coals of wood. And he's talking about these coals of wood, and I was looking at that, and it's called a broom tree. It's a juniper that burns hot and long. It don't have a whole lot of flame, but it has an intense heat to it. And it'll burn a long while. It's an awful thing to be punished with that and stuff like that. His arrow shall reach, listen, the many. At any distance, that arrow is going to reach. You can't get away from it. They cannot go away from the Lord. They can't get away from him. They can't go from him. They can't do like John, John was trying to hide from him and run from him. His burning coals, praise God, is his wrath. That's his anger. And no flame, no crackle in this intense heat, just intense heat. And so liars will be cast into the lake of fire. This is what we kind of refer to, spoken of in, over in Revelations. John writes about, in, in Revelation 22 15, about hell. And that's the lake of fire that he's talking about. So we read these Psalms here and we see in relation to what other verses, other chapters, other history they bring to mind as we read them. In verse 5 here, he said this He said, <coughs> Woe is me that I sojourn in Messiah. And he says that I dwelt in the tents of Kedar. And we're going to try to read a little bit of that in a little bit. But how terrible it is here, the psalmist is writing, for me to live here in a land of Messiah. Yes. This thing, to live among the people of Kedar. And the psalmist complains about the, the bad company, the bad people out there, those that's hostile in his surroundings. And he dwelt among a rude, barbarous people like this in Qadar. Qadar there is, is, is we will read a little bit about it a little bit, but it's a powerful uh, Arabian tribe out there. And, and we read some, it's, they said, Isaiah talks about a Mesic there, the area of Turkey. That's the modern Turkey where, where Mesic here. And what I found interesting, at the time of writing for some time back, they were three members of the Commonwealth of the Independent States, as it was called. And you know who they were? They were Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. Those three that you hear on the news now. The same thing that we're taking. Think on this, that this is what he's talking about. And you read the Word, and you read Revelation, you see where the bear comes down from the north. Who's the bear? That's Russia. So here we find here, just when I was reading and studied, it was kind of, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, and they're at it now. But they were independent. They were in the independent states back in the days. And Kazakhstan is it, it's just across the border there. It's going to be involved in all this before it's said and done. Is this the latter day? I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't see it from where I'm standing, but I see it's a, a sad situation. Yes. And, and think on this. But over in uh, Jeremiah. Turn over there just for a little while and we'll read something. In Jeremiah there, uh, in 49, we pick up there somewhere around 28. We might, I might just look back just a little bit. <coughs> Jeremiah the prophet prophesied against Arabia. Now he prophesied in Jeremiah against a lot of people, a lot of nations. Uh, and just different ones. And we just kind of look back. And uh, Kadar there was a, a bad place to live. It was just a bad place. Jeremiah prophesied to many uh, Jews and to the Gentiles, the Egyptians, the nations, before and after the captivity. He was there. He was there prophesying to them. And so we want to read something about that he, over in, in chapter 49. But I'm just going to pick up at kind of the first of it a little bit. Uh, Shady, if you want to go there, we just pick up in Jeremiah 1. I just want to, we need to, like to be clear, it's hard to jump in the middle of these chapters, but Jeremiah here, we'll read just a little bit about him, and you all know uh, something about Jeremiah. And he's a, a beloved prophet. He, he is, he stands the test of time. And he says, in, he did pick up in verse 2 there. He says, To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, 
the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. So it was coming. He says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now this is this is Jeremiah. Uh, uh, he said, Before I formed thee in the belly, he said, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, he said, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Boy, isn't that something? I mean, before he formed you. He said, Part Jeremiah, for what the work of the Lord to be praised God prophet. And then here's what the response is. This is the excuses that not only they made, but we make. Lord, I can. I don't feel like it. I don't want to. I don't know them that well. All these things come to mind. But he said in verse 6 then, said, I ought, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And this is what Jeremiah's responding. But here's what the Lord says, and, and it says it plain. You don't have to we're about whether he's going to do it or not. He said, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt be. So he didn't have really a choice in the matter. We may think we do something now, but when it's all said and done, we probably don't. You know, God, God knows. He called Jeremiah. He commissioned and praised God and sent him forth to the work. He said, be not afraid of their faces. Don't worry about them. Jeremiah, he said, it's all right. Whatever look, they grin at you. They just do all these frowns and faces at you. All these things. He said, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Well, that's, that's a promise from God. That we, if we are teaching, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, he said, he said, I'm going to be with you. I'll deliver you. Praise God, saith the Lord. From what? That emotion. That that uh, natural feeling that you get sometimes. Because you say, well, I'll kind of dodge that word a little bit because who's sitting out here. But be careful. We need to go ahead and cover whatever God gives us to cover. And, and, and be thankful for it. And praise God and to do us better. Then the Lord put forth his hand. Well, this is what I like. And he took my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. What if, if anything that we need today is God touching us mouth. Putting those words within us that when we speak, praise God, is to glorify Him. Yes. It's to tell the truth of Him. Praise God what He says. Put forth His hand and He took my mouth. Mouth and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Well, that be something to digest. That be something to hold on to. That's why we were read and study that we might digest this word of God. That we might have that word of God put in us. He says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Well, he told him he got a job. Jeremiah's got a job there. He would prophesy both destruction and of blessings. Praise God. He said, be not afraid was spoken to Jeremiah here. And if you remember back in the word of God, boy, he spoke to Abraham with some of the same words. And Moses and Daniel, praise God. And Mary yes. and Peter and Paul. He, he, he spoke to them. Be not afraid. But yet we're still afraid if we're not careful. He says it's all right. And if you just read down just a little bit on 11 there, he says this is a, a confirmation of the call that he's talking about that he has. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I see, and I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And we're not going to stop. We're going to stop there. But that gives you uh, an interest of of who Jeremiah is. And sometimes we, it slips away on us just who he is for us. We get it mixed up with these others. But he prophesied, he began to prophesy to Judah over there just a little ways. And you see as you turn over the 
and where he chased Judah about their misdeeds, and that was that was a bad situation. And he called them to repentance. See, that was his his duty, his job. That was his calling. It wasn't mama, daddy, and some of the rest of it. It was God calling on him. And we have a true calling to be from God. And I praise God for that prediction of judgment. I mean, he went through that, the reason for judgment. And he goes on and on. And he gives them warning. He gives them the consequences of their sin. And all these things is in this word that we're looking at. And it's a precious word. And, and, it, and it's to quite a few of them. Jeremiah was there was persecuted uh, in chapter 20. You see that in, in many times. Uh, we see the old prophets. Well, they was put in prison and they was mistreated and all these things. And and he, you found him all there in the opposition of the false prophets. And boy, he had to stand in the gap. He had to make up the head. He had to do what God told him. Well, there's a time he got tired. He got kind of burnt out with the situation. He said, I'm not going to speak. He said, but he did. I mean, he got, he said, you know, I, I just, I, I'm not going to speak of it. But there's something that's burning in his soul. Praise God that he had to speak to the Lord. Praise God. And then we, we find him in, in the hope of restoration there. So they were taking captives off. So he gave them some light at the end of the talk. He gave them some blessings at the end of destruction. And praise God, that's the way it is with us. I mean, we did in the midnight hours and we're up about and we're having trouble, praise God. He's still God. You know, he don't sleep or don't slumber. He's still God. And he had the prophecies concerning the nation. But over in 49, and he, and he prophesied there to, to Ammon and to Eden and, 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 and against Damascus. But now we're down to verse 28 and chapter 49. And the prophecies against Arabia. This was a, a, a terrible place here, <clears throat> and the reason we're, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at it is because of it is said in the verse Kadar, Kadar that we talked about, and Kadar I, I, I read about it. You find it it was a tribe, a Arabian tribe, but it also uh, it, it was the son of Ishmael. So these where these come from through the Arabian nation. So you lose track of some of those that we read about and studied about in the olden time but they appear or their or their children and all of them. Concerning Kadar, he says in verse 28 and concerning the kingdom of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon shall smite thus saith the Lord, arise ye and go up to Kadar and spoil the men of the east. Kadar, which God, one of the tribes of Aram and, and, and Nebuchadnezzar wanted it subdued unto him. And their tents and their flock shall they take away, and they shall take to themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their countenance, and they shall cry to them, fear is all is on every side. So he said, take it all. Take it all that they've got. Flee. Get you forth all. Verse 30. Dwell deep, O you inhabitants of Hazel, saith the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has taken counsel against you and hath the seed of purpose against you. Arise, get get up, get you up into the wept nation that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars which dwell along. Verse 32, he said this, these are four prizes that you, you listed to and 30, and their camels shall be a booty. That's just what you take. That's the prizes you battle and war. And the multitude that are cattle are spoiled. I will scatter into all winds them that are in the utmost corners. And I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof, saith the Lord. He said, I'm going to bring them in. And then in verse 30, in Hazor shall be a dwelling for dragons and a desolation forever. There shall no man abide there, nor any son man dwell in it. Well, that's something. Dwelling for dragon. What was that? That's just the wild dogs. That's just what he's really talking about. It's not the dragon we conjure up. It's just an animal which that I think he referred to probably as some type of wild dogs. And so we see that here in the verses. And these verses relate to the nomadic tribe, the desert tribes, whom Nebuchadnezzar sought to bring under his control. 
near these times. And, and, and uh, Kadar was one of these uh, tribes. So that's why we're looking at Kadar. And, and that's a, it's some of the same Hazer. These are na names that we can know, that we study. And it's good to hear some of these. We'll go on in verse 5 and move along here. And he said in, in, in verse 5, uh, no, verse, yeah, we've got that, verse 6. He said, My soul has long dwelt in him that hateth peace. So verse 6, he, I've lived uh, too long, Psalmist says, with people that hate peace. They just hate peace. And he says, I've lived too long with them. And, and, and we find that, that we get sometimes like that. You meet people that uses some bad language. You'll see people that talks about the things that we love. And uh, here we're talking about enemies, people. And we as a nation have some bad neighbors. And we just named some of them. Uh, Russia is a bad neighbor. You know, a bad neighbor. China, a bad neighbor. North Korea is a bad neighbor. Iran is a bad neighbor. They're, they're bad people. They're bad neighbors. They want to destroy us. They take no stock in who we are or where we came from. So we find that in verse 6. And never wanting peace. They're never wanting peace. All they want is power. And we see that even in our conflict and the Congress and the Senate and the President. All these things. But we see it over there. The dictatorships. That's a bad situation. That's the reason Ukraine is fighting so hard, these enemies, which are Russian, uh, to, to those uh, grandmothers had got them a weapon, a lot of them. All the women standing too, they'd give it out weapons. Anybody would take them. Someone was sending their families out of the way, the women and children, and, and some of the older women would stay to fight. Some of the men, all of them just about to stay in the fight. Some of the old ones that was too old to fight said, we're going to fight. We're not leaving. And so they, they've chosen and they've talked about it. And if you've seen any of the interview, you know, I'm ready to die for my country. I'm not going to live under Putin and that regime. I mean, that's what they're saying. And that's what you call bad neighbors. Now, why not just leave everybody alone? Keep everybody at peace. They, don't do it. they didn't do it then. They're not doing it now. It's just a thing. If somebody's got a little power, they want to take a little more of that. Just all it is. Just away from God. In verse 7 here, he says, I am for peace, but when I speak, therefore war. That's what we just got through talking about. When I, I talk about peace, the psalmist says, they, they just want war. Yeah. They don't want to hear nothing about peace. They want war. Praise God. We are still to seek peace. Yes. We're to be peacemakers, praise God, in any way. Yes. But there's only so much one side can do. And and, and and still try to overcome evil with what? With good. That's that's us as Christians belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's a time to fight. There's a time to fight us with what's right. And that's the freedom, praise God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Evil seeks to divide us. Evil seeks to destroy us. Evil it, 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 it streaks, it, 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 it seeks to not only destroy and, and to uh, divide us, it's everything, he, it wants everything that's good. And that's what you see, and I've read some in the decision the last day or two, and I see that. I mean, uh, these people, transgender and homosexual, they want it all. They've got a big portion, now they want another big portion. They want the rights. And the rights, where do they come from? They come from us. And all the people's got rights. But then they put us in a category of Christians. They, they've got some, uh, uh, all kind of, uh, what's that, transfer teachings they, they've got going around? Oh, yeah. They're trying to, and what they're trying to do is limit the Christians of speaking of right. what's right. You can't stand up here and preach the word. Right. And it's just out there that, uh, is type of teaching and, 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 and ministering is wrong. It's ungodly. But we see here we are seeing evil firsthand all around us. In our nations, in our homes, in our streets, in our, 
it's like never we've seen it before. Now we've seen uprisings and all these things, and it's always been some battles. But it's most discouraging. These get to be some battles now. We're seeing evil as we've never seen it before. And I've noticed on some of the news, some of the analysts there, some of the anchor people was talking about just that. Said that's evil. That's evil. Talking about that are we on? About Russia, Putin, all that. That's just evil. I mean, it, it's all it is. And those that are starving in Africa, we probably sent enough over there to feed every one of them and house them. But they never get it. The dictators get it. The leaders get it. And they say that Putin, they don't really know what he's worth. Nobody really knows. He's got most of them. And so we see many crying out to God in the scriptures. We see Job and Jonah and David. We see Joshua and all the prophets that's crying out for God. And many others. And we, sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what about us? Are we crying out to God or are we just saying, living in a place where we think we can do it? We think it'll get better. You know? And so we, we find that. And so here it, we end up in, in 120 and we pick up there just we've got time to pick up in 121. And this is a, a, a real interest. I love 21 and, and we probably get to hear more from the one or two verses there and we do a lot of it. Yes. And he says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. And he says, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. In this pilgrim song here, this song for going to worship, going up to Jerusalem, the pilgrim's hymn that are, are true helps, help comes from the Lord. Yes. Nowhere else. Who is the keeper of all? He's the keeper of all. And, and, and the song strikes a strong note of assurance. We have in that assurance in the Lord. Knowing that God is our helper and He is our keeper. He is our protector. He is our preserver. He's all these things. And you'll see it in this word as we read it. And we just go ahead and read these and, 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 and listen to a pilgrim hymnal here. The song that says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. And he's looking to the hills, and you say the hills is his help, though that's the creation. He's looking to God, the creator. But he's looking to the hill, why? Because Jerusalem is on a hill. Probably in that day, he was probably looking toward Jerusalem. Hallelujah. God, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, for which cometh my help. And he tells us, he says, my help. This don't come from the hills. It comes from, come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And that made them hills. <coughs> you see, praise God for looking to the hills from which comes my help. But know where our help comes from. The one that made heaven and earth. And he said, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. And, 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 and see, he's always on duty. And we can't in daylight, dark time, in 24 hours, it doesn't <coughs> matter. He's there. He's there for us if we just put seek him. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. And we look out and say, well, why did God allow this? Why did God not? You have to take that up with God. Yes. Because, you know, none of us really know. We've tried to give you an answer. Uh, and we've tried to give you some solutions to it. Don't work. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So he that keepeth Israel the same one that keepeth us as Christians. Yes. Praise God that shall neither slumber neither sleep. He's there. You don't have to wake him up. You don't have to shake him or do anything else. Praise God. He's there for us. And the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade from thy right hand. It, yep. Uh huh. I can see. You can see better when that sunshine and do this. Shade. Praise God from thy right hand. And the sun shall not spite fight thee by day, nor the moon by night. And the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. It's going to keep you and preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. We're in Christ Jesus. Praise God. We're preserved. We're His. And the Lord shall uh, 
preserved. What's that? Everything that you do, He's going to keep. They're going out and they're coming in from the time forth and even forevermore. He's, he, he's going to be there. He's going to be there to keep us. And, and the first uh, protector there, in the result, He's our preserver and our helper, our keeper. And verse 1 and 2, He said, I look to the hills. He said, I did. And I see my help. And I know where my help comes from. And I know who my help is. Probably those hills, praise God, that we see. And we look up. And he says, keep looking up. Look to Jesus, praise God. Especially the firm that his trust is in the Creator. And is also his help. Verse 3 and 4 there, he says, he will not let you be defeated. He's going to take care of you. He's going to protect you. He's going to fight your battles for you. He was, he's on guard. He never flees. He who protects Israel never rests. He never sleeps. He never gets tired. Praise God of taking care of us. Never get tired Amen. of taking care of us. The Lord is always alert. He's always there to protect His people. Always standing ready and willing to help. Over on 1 Samuel. Let's read it just a little bit. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 there. I want to read it. We may not. We may have to come back into this. But if we get, this is Hannah's song, and and we know about Hannah. It's hard to even to start in the middle here. So I want to turn over just a page there, Proverbs chapter one, and, and we see who this is. And Hannah was uh, Samuel. And here is, is is if we're at Samuel, he's the last judge. That comes along. He's the last judge. His early life and his call. He gives his mother and his sorrows and all. But in verse 2 it says Elkanah. Now the, he had two wives and the name of one is Hannah and the name of the other is Peninnah. And Peninnah had children but Hannah had no children. See this is who Hannah is in the story. And this man went out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts. He went down, he went to Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, was there. And when the time that it Equinox uh, offered, he gave to Phinehas his wife and to all his sons and his daughters portions. See, he gave them portions every so often uh, uh, of what was there, of what been made that year, things of that nature. But Hannah here in verse 5, listen, he but said, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So he loved her, so instead of just a portion, he gave her a worthy portion, which is a double portion. You see, a double portion. I mean, he loved her. He gave all the rest a portion. He gave her a worthy portion, which is a double portion. And her adversary also provoked her sword for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. There was an adversary there. Probably the other wives. And so was, was aggravating, agitating the situation. But you have to understand how Hannah handled this. As, as he went, as he did, so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her Therefore she wept and did not eat. So her adversary would pick at her and agitate her and have her where she couldn't eat. I mean, she was upset. That was a, a real thing back in the day. Then said, because if you remember uh, Hagar and, and, and Ishmael, you remember the agitation there. Yes. And uh, Sarah had them sent away. And it was a situation there. But here in verse 8, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved, and not I better to thee than ten sons? He says, boy, I, I'm good to you. You know, why are you weeping? And here in verse 9, we see that supplication. See, Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept soul. 
She was there for a purpose and a reason. She was undecided what the only help she had, the help that we've been reading, talking about this. And it was in bitterness. Bitterness of soul. See, nothing or nobody can help that bitterness of soul but God. And prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow. She made a promise. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid, listen, a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. For she says, I mean, this is a vow. Lord, if you give me a man child, if you give me a man child, I'll give him back to you. I, all the days of his life, he'll share you, praise God. And won't no rage for why he's a Nazarite. Yes. No rage or come upon his head. He'll have long hair. Yes. And it came to pass that she continued praying. Listen to this. Before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. I mean, he looked at it. And he said that he was big, heavy. He was sitting there looking. We found out what happens to him. And he was a heavy man. And he marked her mouth. And now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved and her voice was not heard. That's why Eli thought she had been drunk. He was watching her. Lips was moving and the words wouldn't come out. She was praying in the heart. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Boy, how do you, you understand what she's talking about here? I mean, she's like the old timer says, getting hold of the horns of the altar and praying through. Yes. Not leaving somewhere till they pray through. And he says, Count not thine handmaid for a dog of be like. says, Listen, don't say I'm of that bad crowd out there. Don't say I, I, I'm of the uh, harlots. Don't tell me I'm none of these. Listen, she says, uh, he says, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken. And then Eli asked her and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the, Lord, so the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. You believe God? Yes. She stayed there, praise God, a praying to God in that sorrowful spirit, praise God, till God touched her soul, give her peace. And she went back and eat because she wasn't eating. No. Well, she was upset. She was sorrowful. And we're going to stop right there. I think we'll probably pick up there and, uh, and, and get on into Hannah, maybe her song there, uh, her prayer. And uh, it's a question. If you read this and really some of those uh, just stand out at you, those verses of the Lord's blessing, you know, we have probably picked up there and maybe go on not short this up the more we have to. But uh, we do want to pray and ask God to touch us this morning. And thank God for the Word. Thank God for the precious <coughs> Word of God that we can read and study. We're still free to do it right now. Praise God for that. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, for your mercy and your grace upon us. God, be with us and grant us good service. Lesson from you in Jesus' name.